driving uh, advancement and, and frankly, a, a step change in health and safety in this country. Uh, oh, let me have a look. I call the Honourable Member Carol Bowman. Um, when I was last speaking, I had just um, touched on Clause 9 about um, WorkSafe New Zealand's main objective, and I want to explore that and then look at Clause 10, uh, WorkSafe New Zealand's function. So the main objective, just to reiterate, um, I think is quite a strong one, that WorkSafe New Zealand's main objective is to promote and contribute to the securing, of health, securing the health and safety of workers in workplaces. That's an absolutely critical goal that every person in this House could agree upon, I'm absolutely sure. Um, and so then it goes on in this bill to talk about the functions of WorkSafe New Zealand, and um, they are quite broad-reaching. It's a little unclear to a number of us why um, these provisions are similar, but not as recommended by the Royal Commission itself. Um, but they go through uh, a range from uh, A to N of different elements that um, the WorkSafe New Zealand would have to do to deliver on that objective. And it includes um, a range of uh, research, for example, um, and in G, promote and support research, education and training on or in workplace health and safety. And I think that's vitally important. One of the things I know from my own experience is that um, it's quite difficult sometimes to align the statistics that we collect at the moment, to be really clear on what the trends are, to be able to break things down appropriately by um, different demographic groups. Are there differences between um, men and women in particular industries in terms of their, um, their health and safety um, outcomes, etc., etc.? So I think that's quite an important uh, provision there. And there are also, I think, um, a number of uh, interesting things. Like in K, we've got promoting and coordinating the implementation of workplace health and safety initiatives by establishing partnerships or collaborating with other agencies or interested persons in a coherent, efficient and effective way. Now, I think that, again, that makes a great deal of sense, that there are a range of people and agencies that are uh, operating in this space and that rather than saying that, uh, that uh, WorkSafe New Zealand will necessarily do these things all um, by themselves, that they will collaborate with others who already have expertise and so on. Um, but again, I think I just do really want to reiterate, especially having just listened to the Minister um, and his explanation of uh, clauses 7 and 8, that this this work, this broad range of functions to deliver on uh, what is a good and main objective would be so much stronger if this was driven by a board that was truly tripartite. And, you know, it, it is such an easy thing to say that a board will have the perspective of employers or the perspective of workers. But I think, as Sue Moroni perhaps, um, you know, pushing the parcel out a little in her explanation of that about who might be able to say they have perspectives of this or that, that is not the same as saying that these people will be representatives of um, bodies like the Council of Trade Union, which is the peak organisation for workers in this country and for trade union members that does have expertise, institutional knowledge and respect that has been obtained over many years of operation. And so not only does it, do those um, representatives then have uh, that background, but they also have a whole structure in which to seek uh, feedback and ideas and information that is relevant to the work of the Board of WorkSafe New Zealand. And so I, I, I do think, it, you know, the Minister still has the opportunity to do something about this, and my colleague uh, Andrew Little has got a supplementary order paper which would deal with this issue. And I think if he is as clear and as committed as he says he is to ensuring that there is strong representation uh, with people like Ross Wilson, and nobody would have any question about the ability of somebody like Ross Wilson um, to be there as, as a CTU representative. Well, that's, actually, that's a very good point. I'd forgotten that momentarily, um, Ms Fenton. That's true. How could that have happened when somebody with that degree of knowledge and expertise and commitment? Um, but, 
Yes, yeah, so that's good anyway. Simon, so obviously the minister, on the other hand, does understand, but he could easily represent um, the voice of workers and through an institutional um, arrangement with representative organisation like the Council of Trade Unions. And so I think Andrew Little's SOP... I call the Honourable Member Chris Ockenbaum. I move that the question be now put. The question is that the question be now put. As many of that opinion will please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Party vote has been called, is it? The clerk, clerk will please conduct a party vote. Thank you. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 33 votes opposed. Green Party. 10 votes opposed. New Zealand First. Seven votes opposed. Māori Party. Three votes in favour. Mana. One vote opposed. Act New Zealand. One in favour. United Future. One in favour. Brendan Horan. Brendan Horan. Mm. Any other votes? Honourable members, the ayes are 64, the noes are 55, the motion is agreed to. The question now is that the Minister's amendments set out on SOP number 374 be agreed. Those of that opinion will please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that Andrew Little's amendments set out on SOP number 387 be agreed to. Those of that opinion please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Aye. The noes have it. Aye. Aye. Party vote called. Clark will please conduct a party vote. Thank you. New Zealand Labour. National. <laughs> 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labour. 33 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 votes in favour. New Zealand First. 7 votes in favour. Māori Party. 3 votes opposed. Mana. 1 vote in favour. Act New Zealand. One vote opposed. United Future. One vote opposed. Brendan Horan. One vote in favour. Any other votes? Honourable members, the ayes are 56, the noes are 64, the motion is not agreed to. The question now is that part one, as amended, stand part. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that part two, stand part, and that is debate on clauses 20 through to 39. It also includes the schedules two and three. The question now is that the minister's... Is the minute member calling? Ah, oh, right. The member's call calling. Mate. OK. Yes. Mr Chairman. I call the Honourable Member Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, the, uh, this part of the bill really...